Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Hi, and welcome to Postscript. I'm Luann Riley, Grow Group Director, and I'm here with Jason Johnson from the Christian Alliance for Orphans. He just brought a message called Gospel and Our Adoption on Galatians. Welcome, Jason. Thank you. We are so glad to have you here today. Thank you. Um, We're going to look and ask, just talk about a few things, some questions that came in. Mm -hmm. Um, We'll look at how do we know if we're called Mm -hmm. after hearing a message like this? Um, What are ways that we can help um, foster parents or foster if maybe financially we don't think that we're in the right place. Mm -hmm. Um, And we're also going to talk about um, what do we do if we feel called, but maybe our spouse doesn't, and then talk through just some practical next steps for people. Um, So let's get started. You ready? Um, So you hear a message like this, um, which obviously invokes an emotional response as well Mm -hmm. as a spiritual response. And so one of the questions is, how do I know if I am actually called to adopt or foster? Yeah. I think one of the things I would say is that There's a lot of people out there that they feel that fire in their heart. And many people's stories are, we've been thinking about it for a long time. We've been praying about it for a long time. It's something we've always known we wanted to do. We're just never quite sure when. And so what what I would say to many people is, if you're someone that keeps thinking about it and talking about it and praying about it and desiring it, it probably means that you just need to do it. And, it also probably means that you would do it really well. You'd be great at it. And so just that encouragement for people who wonder, we've thought about it for a long time, but we're never quite sure when's the right time. And the reality is is that there's really never a perfect time to foster or adopt. There's always something that we're busy or the money or life stage. There's never a perfect time to foster or adopt. It really just comes down to us deciding now is the time to say yes, despite the many reasons that we have to say no. Mm. Uh, And so I would encourage people in that. Um, Second, I think that calling is such a funny word for a lot of people. Um, And uh, we we use it sometimes to support why we're doing something or we use it sometimes to support why we're not doing something that maybe we should be doing. And so for me, it's more of um, a leading into it. And I think that on some level, we all are called in some capacity mm-hmm. to, to engage in the lives of the marginalized and the orphan. The question really is not so much, am I called? It's how am I mm-hmm. called? And helping people really discern that. And I think that one of the best ways for us to do that is in the context of community, mm-hmm. that we're able to go to those who know us best and say, hey, here's what I'm thinking, here's what we're feeling, and to really filter that through the people who know us best. You know, if I went to my some of my closest friends and said, guys, uh, I'm taking on a new ministry. It's going to be interpretive dance ministry, right? I would hope that they would love me enough to say, brother, uh, we don't think that that's the right thing for you right. to do, right? Um, and so in a more serious tone, going, going to close people and saying, here's what we're thinking. You guys speak into that for us. Help us refine that. Think through that. Um, and the truth is this, is that you never really know until you do it. Hmm. It's a lot like getting married. Are you ever really ready, ready? Right. I mm-hmm. wasn't. Are you, and having kids. And so it's one of those things in life where you're ready enough, but you're never fully ready. Mm-hmm. And then the Lord is gracious to take care of you in, in the midst of it as you engage in it. Good. Yeah. Good. And I think that leads right into another question that came in, and that's um, what if I am feeling called, but, but my spouse is not? Yeah. Um, what, would, what advice would you have there? Yeah, so um, a lot of prayer and a lot mm-hmm. of patience. Um, and I know that sometimes that feels like we're not really doing anything, but it's by far the most important thing we can do is to be praying that God would cultivate that in the heart of our spouse, be it a husband or a wife. But then there's some very practical things that we can do. If the scenario, and it most likely is the case that it's a husband or wife that really wants to open their home to children and the other spouse isn't quite sure, well then maybe you take a step back from from that and you say, well, rather than starting with opening our home to a child, I'm going to find some other maybe uh, simpler ways to get involved. Mm -hmm. Um, It could be providing meals. It could be... 
um, becoming babysitters for foster parents. Just some simple things that we can do that that baby step us into the space without without we're not diving off the the high dive first jump, you know. Okay. Uh, and really, it's it's. It's something that God does in people's hearts. He cultivates that passion in people's hearts. Our job isn't to cultivate that in people's hearts. Our job is to pray that God would and then to put kindling around the fire in their heart and, and beg God to use that kindling to burn that fire more and more. So it may be that a spouse is not totally opposed to it. They just have some concerns and maybe now's not the right time. Wonderful. Maybe there's an inkling of a fire there, and I'm just going to begin to put a little kindling around it. Um, and it could be we're going to we're going to sponsor a kid internationally through an organization, or we're going to become babysitters for a foster family we know, or we're going to cook meals. Just little pieces of kindling, and then you just pray that God would use that kindling to grow that fire. Good, yeah. good. And so uh, you talked about a few of the simple steps, um, but one of the questions that came in was um, someone who wants to help, mm -hmm. um, but says that financially or even logistically fostering or bringing a child into their home is yeah. not um, right for them at this time, but they want to be involved. What are things that you can do if those aren't where you... Yeah, yeah. Um, so there's some misconceptions, especially regarding foster care, that it's expensive to do foster care. And the reality is, is that um, it's actually not. It's, in many cases, it doesn't cost you anything. Uh, much of it is subsidized by the state and the county. Um, and so just removing some of those misconceptions for people. Um, but also uh, turning the tables back onto the church and saying, you know, if there's people in your church that are feeling led in certain directions, and there's a cost associated with those that they're not able to meet. Just as we discussed during the service, mm -hmm. that's an incredible opportunity to wrap mm -hmm. other people around that who say, you know what, we can take care of that need. Um, and these are different parts of the body performing different functions, but they're all equally important. Um, for a family who's bringing a child into their home, most of us would say that's the most important thing that anyone can do. And it is very important, but you better believe that family that's bringing the child into their home if they have someone financially helping them, they're saying that's the most important right. thing you can do. So all equally important. Um, and, and that's really the culture that we want to see established uh, at, in the church and, and even here at Faithbridge, that those types of needs are met and that those hurdles are removed before anybody ever even faces them. Uh, but then there's also just a whole other slew of opportunities for people, again, most people don't know that foster parents, if you have a foster child in your home, only a certified babysitter can mm -hmm. babysit that child. Right. And that means if you have other biological children and you want to go on a date night, you have to have a certified babysitter at your house because you have a foster home, a foster child in your home. And so it's a simple process of getting background checked and CPR certified. And it's a simple thing that a team of people in the church can do that goes a long way in serving and supporting foster families. And so that's a very practical thing. Again, some customary things that we do in churches. When a new baby is born, uh, there's, meal, there's a meal calendar for them. Mm -hmm. Let's do the same thing when a new foster placement comes right. or a new adoptive placement comes. Um, even on a church leadership level, uh, one thing, you know, we, when a new baby is born, we have baby dedications. How about when a new foster placement comes, if there's a foster family dedication or an adoptive family dedication? Uh, there's certainly the financial, uh, that people can come to the church and say, we, we want to financially support this cause uh, that people are living out in our church. Mm -hmm. There's just a whole slew of opportunities. Mm -hmm. Back to school time in July and August is important for gathering school supplies That's for kids right. who otherwise wouldn't mm -hmm. have them. Christmas time is a great opportunity mm -hmm. to bless kids in our city here in the foster care system. Uh, getting some men, a team of men that every Saturday goes and mows some foster families' yards. You know, these families, uh, they, they're bringing these children into their home and with those children come court appointments and doctor's mm -hmm. appointments and caseworker visits and all of these added things that a, a team of guys could come and say, you know what, uh, we're going to remove one extra thing that you have to do, which right. is mow your yard. We're mm -hmm. just going to do it for you. And so again, like we said, the opportunities are endless and full of creativity. And they're as diverse as the people in the church are. And so someone can come with, with 
here's what I'm really passionate about. I just met a guy in the lobby. He said, I'm going to be at the informational meeting next Sunday. I'm not adopting a kid, but I make a mean brisket. Hmm. And I said, great. They need to know who you are. You need to be at that meeting. You know, here's a guy that says, I know what I can't do, and I know what I can do. Mm -hmm. And what I can do, I want to do for uh, a good purpose. You know? So good. And yeah. what a great segue into the informational. Yeah. So if you are, um, if you were here today or you listened online and you, and you are interested, the first step, right, is to come to yeah. the informational. Absolutely. Nice. And so next Sunday on the 20th, mm -hmm. right after the 11 o'clock service, lunch is provided, child care is provided, and it is just an incredibly powerful time for people uh, to be drawn out of the masses of the church, if you will, and to come into a room mm -hmm. together and to look around the room and, and just be overwhelmed by there is a community of people in my church mm -hmm. that share the same heart that I do. Mm -hmm. And you begin to hear people's stories and the power of everyone going around the room and saying, this is who we are and this is why we're here. And what ends up happening is you'll hear one story, this is who we are and this is why we're here. We're, we're newly married, we don't have any of our own kids, but we just feel like we're gonna adopt one day. Uh, and then the next person will stand up and say, we've been married 60 years, we've adopted nine children, we've fostered 70, and we financially support an orphanage in Uganda, uh, and we're happy to be here. And it's like, those two stories could not be more different, but those two stories coming together, there's mm -hmm. so much power in that. I think a lot of people in churches when they begin to feel this burden in their heart, they're not quite sure, who do I talk to about it? Where do I take it? And informational lunches like this is, is the solution to that. This is where you go to talk about it and where you take it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people feel like maybe I'm alone in this. You know, I, I'm, I, I keep this to myself because I'm not sure if there's other people that share this passion. And then you come into a room like that and you look around and you realize I'm definitely not alone in this. Mm. It's yeah. good, um, and I know you'll talk a little bit. Uh, they'll, you'll talk a little bit more about the study um, at the informational. But mm -hmm. I know that the orphan care, all-in orphan care study, mm -hmm. that's coming up starting in October. Yes. Um, that was actually material that uh, you were part of creating yeah. and that you wrote. Um, can you just give us a little um, overview of mm -hmm. what that study is about? If someone might be interested in signing up for that. Absolutely. And so, as we said this morning. Um, the opportunities to get involved are endless. And so this study is intended to move people in that direction. And so it really begins where we were this morning with laying the theological framework. What is it that really compels us into this? What is it that sustains us in this? Mm -hmm. I mean, we would say the gospel sustains us in it, even when it's hard and difficult. We're reminded that uh, the gospel reminds us that it's worth it. Um, mm -hmm. But then moving into just some practicals, helping to debunk maybe some false thinking that mm -hmm. maybe we think it's like this, but in actuality, it's not going to be like mm -hmm. this. Helping people identify their unique role in this. And so again, even in the study, we move towards talking about the body of Christ and helping people identify you're an ear, an eye, a hand, a foot, and here's different mm -hmm. opportunities to get involved. Uh, and so the intent of the study is for anyone to engage and then to move people in a direction that helps them gain clarity on the unique way that they can get involved. It's certainly not designed to pigeonhole anyone into any one uh, right. route, okay, right? Good. It's designed to help people explore the variety of ways that maybe God's calling them to engage. Great, yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today um, and for your ministry. Yeah. Um, just continued prayers for that. And we just wait expectantly to see what God uh, is going to do here through Orphan Care. So thank cool. you for being with Absolutely us. Absolutely, a pleasure. Great, and thank you for joining us. Thank you for your questions. We'll see you back here next week for Postscript. Thanks for joining us for Postscript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org postscript.